From the Woodshed, a casual conversation with Chase Morrill and Ryan Eldridge of Kennebec Cabin Company, the team that inspired the hit show Maine Cabin Masters. From the Woodshed is brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp, trust the quality. By Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. By Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And by Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. Now, from the Woodshed Studios in Manchester, Maine, it's Chase and Ryan. From the Woodshed, I'm Chase Morrill. With me, as always, Ryan Eldridge and Maggie Morrill. We're here to talk about all things Maine cabins and Maine cabin related, and today it's paint related. Good old paint. Kevin Hunt, the regional sales director for Benjamin Moore, will be joining us. And so, Red Sox. Uh, and Red Sox. God, I love them. So stick around for that. But you can find us at KennebecCabinCompany.com, MainCabinMasters.com, our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and push us. Ring the bell. Ring the bell. I could say. So, and don't forget to check out our online store at shop.KennebecCabinCompany.com. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And none of this would be possible without our sponsors, Nelma, Northeast Lumber Manufacturing Association. Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. Hammond Lumber Company, the official building materials supplier of Kennebec Cabin Company, and Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. I was just thinking about how much fun we had with Kevin and the Red Sox last year. It was so surreal. Yeah, I mean, and flat. I beyond mean, surreal. It's beyond surreal. Like, <laughs> and what, what's cool is like, I'd kind of like I had season tickets with my college buddies for a couple. Of, Long time. Then the show picked up. A long up. time. Long time. But then the show picked up, and I would be like on the job site, and I'd be like, oh, you have tickets today. And I'd be like trying to give them away. You know, we're just so busy. And I kind of got out of it. And then with the Red Sox, like, you know, catching fire last year, and then F- Fletcher really like loving yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. It was awesome. It was. It was Mag- like, yeah, Maggie even got to uh, spend a little time in Boston with us. Yeah. Not really. I was in Boston while you guys were at a Red Sox game. You drove then. down with us and drove home with us. Yeah. And, and you, it, and you saw really the energy. Long. And it was really long. <laughs> it went like to like whatever, 13 or whatever. Yeah. But, but you respected it. Kind of like I respect a horse show now. Like just a different world, but really cool and interesting. But that was extra special because the sure. Boston Marathon was going on at the same time. So like the whole city was just yeah alive. And you guys had fun. Yeah. Yes. And Fletch got another foul. I mean, Fletch got a foul ball every time we went. Yeah, it was, it was, Yes. A kid's dream. So when I was down in Puerto Rico, you know, Puerto Rico is a big baseball place, and people were like, oh, blah blah, and like, you know, I love the Red Sox, and I'd be like, show them the pitch, and they like, they would not believe it. Like, <laughs> why is this long haired hippie like throwing a ball out? Like, it's like long. Who is story. this guy? Like, Who is this guy? But yeah, I mean, it's just so surreal. Like one of those lucky things. That, we're so lucky. Yes. But yes. It was awesome. And it's been a great relationship, and we'll. Talk all about Benjamin Por- Benjamin Moore paint and how great it is with Kevin. And the funny thing was I fought it the most. And look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you get older, Maggie, you eat a lot of crow and you, you realize, like, you don't know everything. Yeah. But on a more important note, Harry Styles has a new single out. Yeah, he does. Was it the most, like, downloaded thing ever? Um, Not ever, but it's up there. What's it about? Um, Just, like, change. I like change. Change is good. It's a new sound for him. Yeah. Jam band? Is he jamming? A little more pop. Is he wearing a tie-dye? No. no. <laughs> He's wearing a... I, 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 I had to watch the video. Of course. He's wearing a sequin jumpsuit or something. What would you call that thing? Yeah. Was it as bad as Justin Bieber at the um, Grammys the other night? Ju- no. Justin Bieber was bad. What was Justin Bieber? It he- wasn't... Okay, it wasn't that bad. He looked like a robot, though. like he was wearing shoulder pads. And he just like, had a like, really big suit on. Like 20 times too big with shoulder pads. Oh, that's weird. Looked like a little kid wearing his father's shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I watched some of that and like, I just, I'm so narrow minded in my music. And like watching it all was just like such a, so new to me, but it was crazy like everything that goes into it and stuff. Like, is it BTS? Like mm-hmm. those guys, like the guys on the computer and then these guys are dancing and like, yeah, it. it's a whole, whole different world. Whole another world. Mm-hmm. But Harry also has an album coming out. Yep, May twentieth. So are we right? Are we right for that? Last time Harry dropped something, you like you dropped some coin, didn't you? Last time Harry dropped something, she pretty much dropped to the floor. Yeah, but she spent some what money. What are you talking about? When you first heard his song, you were like screaming and fell to the ground. 
Well, I was in my room. You didn't even I see me. I heard the thump. But what was I was it? on my bed. You're not. You're lying. No, but what just happened? Like a while ago, you spent all this money, right? Didn't he like? Oh, yeah. I didn't. I spent all my money. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? That's why you work hard. Question. You know what? Now, your dad can't tell you what to spend it on because yeah. you earned it, girl. True. You earned it. Exactly. <laughs> all those hundreds I've been giving you for your birthday, spend them on something <laughs> fun. <laughs> right? Sure. Why not? So the guys um, always make fun of like I like I like John Mayer like Dead and Company like a lot of people don't like him, and then we're we're back filming and it's kind of like getting back in the groove and then we're like I goes oh yeah. Harry Styles is going to be with John Mayer and Dead and coming to play someone else. And I kind of went with it for a minute. And I was like, now she's like, no way. Because I was like, oh my God, I can bring the girls. We're going to go to a dead show. We'll be on Shake Down Street. It's going to be so awesome. Worlds are colliding. We'll, we'll, we'll get a van. We'll take a year off from college. Oh like, God. it'll be awesome. <laughs> Didn't happen. No. I knew you would have come with me, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. She's yeah, so she, sweet. She would have. <laughs> <sighs> Good times. Yeah. We'll never get Harry here, though. Where's he playing? Look, Boston. I mean, you guys saw him in Boston. Yep, he's doing Coachella. Maybe you'll just bump into him on the streets in London. He's gonna be doing Coachella. Oh, there. so what's the whole like? I'm so I look like so. Kanye's not doing Coachella. No, now. Kanye dropped out of Coachella. For Harry was there. Reason. Like, I can't keep up with it. What am I? Oh no, I'm thinking of um, Burning Man. That he, Harry won't do Burning Man. No. <laughs> oh, no he'll, down the road he will. He's like going to go through a phase, right? Like, Yeah, right? No, I doubt it. <laughs> I think How old is he? We'll make a prediction eight. right here. In 15 years, yep. Harry Styles will be headlining Burning Man. Yeah. Do actual famous people do Burning Man? I think, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they do. Yeah. It's all like DJs and electronic music. I know none of the Burning people. Man is? Yeah. Like, oh, really? Like, yeah. like Coachella like, is like... I shouldn't EDM? say that. EDM music, yeah. Everyone that I know that oh, goes is kind of like... Mm-hmm. Kind of introverted. Kind of nice, but kind of weird. Like, I know they're not watching this right now, thankfully. But the few people I know that have gone to Burning Man are kind of like... It's this whole like demographic. Because like, they go there and like really express themselves. Burning Man's another level. I like, thought it was more like... No. Steampunk... No, Burning Man's like let's dress up like unicorns and frolic around with burning things and oh, like listen you, to like go to work. music I don't care for. Oh, what my is this? No, that's different than Slab City. I think Slab City's a town in California. That yeah, that's a whole nother with, yeah scene too. They my, just live there. Like, yeah, my just... buddy Kirk stopped by there. All right, we need to take a west out west trip. <laughs> yes, let's um. all go to Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous because <laughs> oh my God. I got on the moral bandwagon soon after like the um, RV trip. So I think I deserve one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to do another one of those. Oh, come on. We'll have so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. You don't think we would? <laughs> and, I was a, RV trip? and I was abandoned in Washington. So. We rented an RV I, out west one time. And <laughs> right, yeah, right, the before, kids were really right, right, right before Ryan. Yeah. Mm, uh, it may have led to... Pre-Ryan, yeah. yeah. Led to me? Yeah. Aww. But I'm going to tear up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I spent some great quality time with Ed when I was in the <laughs> RV. We do love Ed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was but. stuck with him after my dad abandoned me. <laughs> this is your dad. Okay, I yeah. get it. <laughs> went, went back to Maine. All right, road, road trip coming up. We'll, no, we're not road doing, trip no, to Burning road, Man. We're not doing any road trips. We're not going to Burning we'll Man. We'll hit Coachella, Burning Man, Slab City. Absolutely. Any other good festivals? Can we start Fish Bangor this summer? Easy, like up and back? No. You know who's playing in Bangor this summer? Backstreet Boys. Yeah, that was my Harry Styles back in the day. So like someone your age, you guys like Backstreet Boys. What, when you hear that, what do you think? Like, oh, my parents are old or like... What? When you hear Backstreet Boys, like, I do, just do you didn't know who... think they were still touring. They're not. They're playing <laughs> they some are? theater in Bangor I've never even heard of. Are you going? <laughs> no. Oh. You definitely should. <laughs> sure. Justin scary. Bieber's been seen at fish shows. Really? So crazy. I don't like Is Justin Bieber. Is that true? Yeah. 100%. 100%. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know, musicians can appreciate all music. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate all music. Yeah. I will go to Harry Styles, so if you come to Fish Bango, it will be Maggie. Okay. <laughs> nice. It's on video. You heard to hear first. 
All right, well, we're just gonna, like talking about music and stuff. Yep. So let's um, watch a cool video by um, Hero Media Network. Take a short break, and we'll get back with our guest. My son lobsters now, and my husband and my grandchildren lobster. My father's family are some of the first settlers in friendship, so we've been here for a long time. In 2012, the price of lobster was really low that summer, and so we were looking for different ways to market Maine lobster. I remember one time some dogs came here and were trying to get lobster off the picnic table, and I went, huh. I just started looking at a basic dog treat recipe and trying to work with it, and I needed to be able to manage the dough. And you know, people will say, I didn't know dogs like lobster. I really don't have dogs, turn them down. In the beginning, I had to go knocking on doors, but probably the best thing I did was I became a vendor at the Rockland Farmer's Market, and I learned a lot from the other vendors. I learned a lot from the people bringing their dogs. Everybody has just been helpful and fun about the whole process. It's been really, it's been really good. No, I wasn't young and I'm not young, but I just thought, you know, if I don't try this, I'm really gonna regret this in a few years. So I'm just gonna go and try this and see. Yeah, it's, it's great, and I hope it represents Maine, you know, and the lobster industry. And we are back with Kevin Hunt. Kevin Hunt is the regional sales of Benjamin Moore. Yeah. Regional sales manager. Regional sales manager, sorry. Nice. That's a big region, too. What is it exactly? Yeah, so it goes kind of like all the way from, like, almost the Tappan Zee Bridge. It goes from, like... Um, so from Greenwich, Connecticut, all the way over to Buffalo, all the way to the Canadian border. So um, all the New England states, plus upstate New York, all the Hudson Valley. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, so we just had a company training last week yeah. or the week before with Benjamin Moore. Kind of learned a little bit about paint and the history. I found it interesting, the history of Benjamin Moore, you know, how he started it and all that stuff. And Was it Benjamin Moore? Yeah, exactly. it was. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely a confident man. Start a business, you know. <laughs> Ryan Elder's paint company. All right, before we go any further, yeah. this is our SOS oh, segment. Sorry, Shoot sorry. the shit. Would you like water, coffee, or beer? Man, you guys, try could coerce me into a beer. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we got a little beer cooler back here. We have the Dash Seltzers. We have Cold Harbor, Double Rim Ravina. We have a Last Night. We have Juice Freak. We got some. Baxter window seat. What else we got over here? Yeah, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not picky, guys. I, I don't know that I found one I hadn't liked. You're not picky. <laughs> All right, let's. Yeah, yeah. So, Cold Harbor, the gentleman came up through. He's a big fan of the show. Um, I was going to Sugarloaf. He stalked the fridge. I was, well, I was wondering the it. story behind that. Yeah, I sent me an email the other day. So, thank you very much. So, All right, 6.5% juice freak. Mm. Last night, Cole style. I can't even read that. Double, Double Ravina. <laughs> Netipa. Chase, we got one? I'm going juice free. I think that one's probably the best. There we go. All right, I'm going to go with try it and cheers. 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 Diet approved dash. Oh, we're drinking these out of the glass, too. Wow, right. they're glasses. A little fancier up here than we are downstairs. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, how's your winter been? My winter has been good. I, you know, I've traveled a little. Uh, you know, I got down to the uh, Gulf Coast once and got down to. Bahamas once, and I made a few trips to my favorite little place down south, Nashville, Tennessee. So, <laughs> so can't go wrong with that place. And you are a southerner living in northern. You know, uh, you know, you know. So yeah, I did. I, I grew up out. I grew up outside Nashville, a little small town, Adamsville, Tennessee. One red light. Uh, shout out to Adamsville. You, got a lot of, you guys have got a lot of fans there. Um, and then, one uh, red light. One red light. And still to this day, one red light. Nothing <laughs> hasn't changed. Um, and then, you know, I started with Benjamin Moore next month. It'll be 29 years ago. Wow. So um, 
right out of college. I uh, started down in Houston, Texas, and then up to Fort Worth, and then uh, landed in the Rockies. And, of course, like some of you guys, spent a little time in Colorado, yeah. so 24 years, actually. And I managed uh, all the Rocky Mountain states for a number of years. Um, and then in 2018, you know, my family, we had uh, vacationed um, in Casco Bay up in the Brunswick area and everything for a lot of years. We had an opportunity to move to Boston, so um, or the New England market. Yeah. So, moved to the Northeast, and I've been here since 2018. So, um, nice. yeah. So, yeah, I haven't got to, you know, I haven't got to explore as much as I'd like to, just because you know everything has gone on. You know, like the last couple of years of the pandemic. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So you got all this yeah. time ahead of you now. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I love Maine. Man. There's a lot to Maine. see. Maine is a great place. So, so. Like, before I, I cut Chase off, to history of Benjamin Moore. Yeah. No, I just, you know, how it's grown over the years. It's uh, all over the country and. They make their own pigments, and I thought that was, you know. So pigment is like the coloring. No. Yeah. Or is it? No, well, what's the pigment? We, um, it's what holds the coloring. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, know. yeah, so 100, 140 years this year. Started with a couple of guys down in Brooklyn. I think they had a $2,000 investment, and they started a paint company. Oh, in New York, and, really? Yeah, yeah. So we were, you know, born and bred East Coast type company, and. You know, uh, 140 years, I know we've expanded now, you know, across North America and a lot of in the UK and in different places. So um, we were family owned up until 2000. So the Moore family actually owned us in 2000. And at that point, we were acquired by uh, uh, Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. Oh. So um, it got to uh, be a good product yeah. if you guys, yeah. buy, if he's buying you, that guy knows his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I tell people all the time, people ask me, you know, that question. And I always say that. You know, that's one great thing about working for Benjamin Moore and the, and the career that I've had is that you never have to apologize for quality. It's it's what we do all day long, every day. Every that's it's what we build in every gallon that we make. So um, we do try to do as much to your point, Chase, as, as we can as far as you know manufacturing and, and creating our own resins and creating our own uh, materials that go into yeah. our products and you know everything proprietary where we can. So uh, yeah. So our relationship started, what, two years ago now? I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, we've always known Benjamin was a good product, but we um, were all over the – when we first had the show, we were all over the place. And, you know, we're easy. We were, we were just running around with our head cuts off, cut off. Like, anything we could do to make our life easier, you know. So we used a competitor because they were everywhere. And um, I mean, we were using – most a stash of paint that started oh, with oh. my father, <laughs> and we would just start mixing stuff together. And we, we, we bought <laughs> I mean, out. It was yeah. We bought out a few got hardware stores. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and then we would use like Sherwin's a little bit, and it was it was fine. But and then you guys approached us, and I, my concern was that we're so busy, and it was easy to get their paints. And you guys assured us that you were going to take care of us, and I do everything you could could to show us. You know that you're. New England, like you, the values of New England and the Northeast, and you know that you wanted to, yeah. you know, help us out, and like it's been a great relationship. You guys great. have made things easier, and then hear. our painters have said that it's a far a superior product, nice. which is the most important. Awesome, that's great to hear. Yeah, it's um, you know, we're we're very very fortunate that we're supported, and we support uh, a, a huge group of independent retailers all across America, and um, you know, independent retailers, mom and pops of the country. Um, you know, day in, day out, they're entrepreneurs. They do everything. You know, they 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 open and close the doors. They're behind the counters and everything. Yep. So, I'm happy to hear that um, that relationship's well, working that, out really well. That fact, like you said right there, kind of shows you how like narrow minded I can get. You know, I didn't. You guys are actually more available than other companies we've used because you are in mom and pop stores and like, yep. you know, all over the place. Yeah. And paints the one play one of the places I'll say like, you get what you pay for, like. You can, it's such a difference, right. like when you right. use paint a lot. Yeah. I try not to, but <laughs> I mean, people, people tend to want to think about paint, you know, just from a color standpoint. But I mean, from a protection standpoint, that's really, I mean, it's it's twofold. It does both. You know, it's the color and the beautification of something, or making some of the color that you want is one thing. But you know, obviously, the protection and the long term protection of a substrate is a, is is really the key. Yeah, and I think for us. For us, we're in, you know, doing all these renovations. We're applying the paint to, you know, brand new eastern white pine siding, you know, 
older weathered boards that have multiple layers on them or you know it's been worn raw and it's weathered and grayed and the benjamin moore just you know it, it coats it all and it, it holds up and it's you know i mean you notice right away like today on the y camp you know it just same thing it just covers right over nice. it and it makes it i mean you know it when you're putting it on that it's a decent product and it's going to hold up it's always great to hear. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just, it's true. It's that's that's what our chemists do day day in and day out. You know, they 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 try to make products that are user friendly, uh, that last. Yeah, and then, yeah. How do you guys test paint? It must be pretty cool. So huh? it's, it is kind of cool. Oh, so you should have come to. Yeah. We learned all about it. <laughs> yeah. So we have a huge test farm uh, in Flanders, New Jersey. A test farm. So test farm. So we have panels, and the panels rotate with the weather. And with the sunlight and everything, so we we test pan we put we put product on panels and competitive product on panels, and we put it side by side. We let it weather and just see what the weather's going to throw at it. Like, I mean, just like today, we've got and I had sunshine this morning. Oh, it's beautiful! Think, this morning. I stopped to get gas just down the road, and there was a little snowstorm kind of hit for a second. <laughs> but, you know, so it gets all that. So, and we're we're uh, you know we have we have East Coast manufacturing too so you know we're manufacturer we have a manufacturing plant in Johnstown New York and we have one in Milford Mass right outside of Boston so um, yeah we're uh, we're definitely a uh, rich in in Northeast history and New England history and you know it's funny like a lot of our colors I was thinking about driving up here all have names that are are named after towns all up and down the eastern seaboard so nice yeah so we were working today I was filming I was building um little like just bench you know put a little sinks in and talking to ashley and she's like oh you know is that gonna be work enough is that like you can paint it like is it gonna be waterproof enough and then someone yelled out of the corner like uh that's the paint that's on the side of the building so it's like (laughs) i was like oh yeah listen to that they're totally right like you know like i've been using your command product lately and that is like Uh, bulletproof like stuff is amazing yeah so the command product and we launched yeah i think maybe a year year and a half ago um it's a curly cura thing um, dries fast. You put it on a multiple substrates. Well, I, say, I think it's yeah. better than the old stuff because of how quickly it dries. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, it's it's eerie how quickly it can dry, and you can walk on it and recode it. Like absolutely, yeah, you can put it on different substrates. You can put it on yeah. handrails. You can put it on floors. You can put it on. It's a uh, it's amazing stuff, and it down to thirty five degrees. So wow. I know that helps you guys. You know, so yeah, we. Yeah. We might have painted a little bit less than that. <laughs> Wait a minute. What, 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 what is the technology that made that? Is it like, is it polymers or like additives? Like, because t- paint, paint has changed so much from like, you know, back in the day, like an exterior of paint didn't do anything. Like anything. Now it's just yeah. so much better. Yeah. You know, we're always looking to do more and always looking to, to improve. There's science behind it though, right? Yeah, a yeah, lot so, of science. Um, you know, I think, so I've been around for 29 years. I, I you know, we did do a lot of oil-based products years ago, and um, you know, it seems like the acrylic resins and everything have gotten far superior over the last, you know, at least the last 10 to 15 years. They've really, really come a long way. So and there's a lot of different kind of resins, and you know, we could get way in the weeds about that kind of stuff. But you know, acrylics just, um, you know, they keep their color really, really good. well. They're really good with UV and. Um, you know, it's something very important here, especially when you talk about coastal regions and that kind of thing. So, um, they better color clarity, better fade resistance, and those kind of things. And um, you know, they're they're flexible. You know, so when we have seventy degree days and thirty degree nights and that kind of thing, they they are able to expand and contract. Um, so, um, yeah, so acrylic resins have come a long way, and you know, in many ways, they're you know far superior. I mean, there's still things that. You know, oils do I was really say, well. I mean, ben, yeah. ben Moore still makes a, yeah. an excellent oil-based stains. Oh, yeah. And, like, yeah. you know, I think, personally, I think an oil-based, like, semi-transparent or transparent oil, oil stain. Does a great job. Yeah, you no, know, especially with on the on pine and stuff like that. Yeah. It's going to hold up well. And it, so many people yeah. want that wo- natural wood look that yeah. kind of comes through that. And, you know, and, and, and our, our our water-based type stains have come a long way, too. I mean, just recently, you know, I mean, in the last few years, we've really improved some of the, the, the semi-transparents and the yep. transparent, you know, the acrylic stains. But, 
Um, yeah, you know, stains confuse people a lot. You know, I mean, that when you start talking about stains, the opacity situation of stains. So, you know, you think about transparency, yeah. and that's kind of like on the walls here, you know, where you let the most wood grain show through, and it's the most rustic look. And then you have semi transparent, which covers a little more wood grain, and then semi solid covers more wood grain, and then solid, which, um, you know, it's gives you more of a colored type look, but it does allow some of that rustic appearance. appearance. So, um, yeah, stains people stains confuse people, but just think of it from an opacity standpoint. Yeah. People are amazed that we use so much eastern white pine even outside, and like yeah. probably what would you say this thirty or forty years ago you probably couldn't have because the you know your products have changed so much that it's durable. Like we yeah. put some stuff on there now, it's it's bulletproof. Like water just bead right off. It. Yeah. Like we wouldn't have dared to do that a long time ago. Huh. And so a lot of people that don't know about that are just like, I can't believe you guys did that. And like that's gonna last forever. <laughs> Yeah, uh, our, our Arbor Coat family of products from Benjamin Moore makes is they're they're just they're great exterior stains. Yep. Uh, the whole the whole family. So on the stain topic, so a transparent stain you you have a limited color choice for transparent stains, yeah. and then as you get into the more solid, you know, by the time you get to a solid stain, you can get basically any color any you color. want yeah. in a solid stain. So like a semi solid. I think you've got a color palette you can pick from and stuff like that. But yeah, so like when you think about transparency, yep. which is the most rustic, the most it allows the most wood grain to show through. You, know, you typically are you have a limited number of colors that are typically what we call ready mix colors, where we manufacture them, you know, in the manufacturing plant for the shelf. Right. Um, and then you get you know your cedars, your redwoods, your mahoganies, yep. your teaks, yep. your naturals, those kind of things. Because really, you're trying yeah. to highlight the wood yeah. grain and kind of work right. with it. So it's yeah. So you're just and those are the most popular yeah. type of exterior yep. woods, right? So you just mimic the natural color of those. And then you get into the semi-transparents, and those are a little bit more. They're they're tenable. You know, um, we there is a, a broader color range with semi-transparents, semi-solids, even more. And then when like you said, when you get to solids, um, I think it's pretty much unlimited. And we I think we have about 3,500 colors, and you know, I, don't, I don't, I can't think of anything you couldn't get in a solid color stain. Yeah, yeah. and you mentioned a, was it Bar Harbor Beige? Yeah, so I was thinking about that on the way up here. Bar Harbor Beige. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you guys can pronounce it. You know, my, uh, yeah, my accent is not as good as yours, but yeah, I mean, I was thinking about as I, as I was driving up here. I mean, there's a Kittery Green, a Brunswick Beige, a Portland Gray. Um, Kittery I'll, Green. Yeah, there's a. Uh, Booth Bay. Uh, we need a West gray, Garden or something. Bar Harbor base. Yeah. <laughs> Manchester Tan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. 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 So. West Gardner we're, Orange. West Gardner. Yeah. We'll work on that. Chase, is already, you've always, yeah. Chase has always impressed me because you've always known a bunch of paints. Is that for like your dad or like? Yeah. I Yes. But you've always known a lot. Like, you're like, okay, get this, do that. And I'm like, I know nothing about paints. When I, my first year living in Bar Harbor, I worked for a guy who's a house doctor and he did a lot of painting and I had to do a ton of painting. Nice. So I learned, I mean, I used to have to, end of the day, clean all the brushes and just all that stuff. And I mean, he had some paint brushes that were, what, 10, 15 years really? old that mm-hmm. he just, you know. Yeah. It's some, like of those, it, some of those old timers things. Yeah. Yeah. You just take care of them, wrap them. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to sound funny. People can make fun of me. Like, so when do you choose the difference between... I always thought like between paint and stain, like stain was always on natural wood, you know, and like, but you could also paint wood, but now you would more more use like a yeah. non-transparent stain. So you know, I, I think once, stain penetrates yeah. more. Or? I think it's what we see, especially on camps and on cabins and stuff, is a, a natural progression, right? So that, maybe it, when they're first built, they, they go transparent. And then the next time, a few years later, when they're redone, you know, they put another layer of transparent. At some point, now as you've built up, you know, multiple coats, now it's semi-transparent, and you work up to semi-solid. Yeah. And then you're so to the point where, at some point, you're, you're then you're changing you're out windows see, and changing yeah, the exactly, siding. Yeah, you've got yeah, yeah, older stuff and new stuff, and you want to make right. it all blend, and you just yeah. go right over it with a solid. Yeah. Now, how about um, paint and primer in one? Yeah, that seems to be you know past few years as well. It's kind of yeah, it you know I I it I mean it's I mean, very common. We I mean, we all of our interior paints now. Yep. You know it says right on the label our regal lines and everything and aura and everything is paint and primer in one. Um, you know I, I think that I I am a huge fan of primer. 
Yeah. I, I think that there's things that primers do extremely well. What does primer do exactly? What so is the it's, point well, of think primer? of it primer about sealing a surface. Okay. Yeah. So, um, that, you know, different primers do different things. You know, we have primers that block out smoke stains mm-hmm. or we have primers that you know for wood knots and yeah. things and bleeding type stains and things like that but we also make just drywall primers that just seal drywall extremely well you know and to expect a paint to do the same thing as a primer yeah i mean you can get by with it but i'm, I'm, I'm still always a big fan of i mean it's a specialty product it does it's it's designed to do something differently so mm-hmm. um you know, if it's just something small, and you know, I, I I think it's a great it's a great plan. But I'm always a big fan of of, of priming and using a, a primer when when you can get can, when you have the ability to do it. Yep. Like we don't use sheetrock, thank God. But yeah. that's a, a lot of people use primer with that, right? Because yeah. sheetrock has a little bit of porous, yeah. and then you have your mud and tape, so it kind of seals everything. It actually makes your paint yeah. go work better, right? And go yeah. You know, think about just putting everything on an even playing field, yeah. so it takes all the porosity out of drywall or. Everything and, I need a lot of primer. I was playing sports as a kid. <laughs> Get, you know, <laughs> even play and feel. And I'm a big fan of uh, I'm a big fan of oil based primer on raw exterior wood. You know, I mean, it just soaks yep. in and you know it really does a great job. It really seals the wood and everything, and it just does just really puts that and then put a put an acrylic finish coat over the top of it. So the oil based primer soaks in, seals the wood, and then you have that acrylic finish over the top of it that expands and contracts and gives you your UV protection. So it's really a it's a good combination. Whereas stain does not need a primer nope. typically. Yeah, so it's it's designed to soak into the wood. Yep. And, yep. Yeah, yeah. Like right. I said, there's a lot of science in this. You could get really deep. But <laughs> oh, this is all gosh, stuff yeah. you can find on this. Yeah, you guys are hitting me hard. I, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, there's two things out on my resume. And that's chemist <laughs> and interior designer. I need one of them. Yeah. But all this is on your website. And, like, you go to any of these stores that you guys, you know, your products at, people are going to help them out. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ask questions. Ask questions. That's what that's what the people behind the counters are for. That's what our our websites for. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, or we'll have someone else paint like I do. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> get Jake, get Jake on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but on a on a whole another note, we've had a great relationship with you, and we've got to do some fantastic things. Going down to see some Red oh, Sox some games. Fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We have a great relationship <laughs> with the Red Sox. We have for a number of years, and yeah, it's always a lot of fun. That's, you know, Fenway. Oh, you know, I, you know, I I've lived in a lot of towns and what got to watch a lot of baseball, but there is just something special about that ballpark and just being down there. The history, just, huh? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll be back this year for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fun. Friday opening day. Yes, oh, yeah, opening day. Yeah. So I was like at AL East top 100 team or top like um top teams. It was in the top of 15. Number two is Blue Jays, five is the Rays, six is Yankees, and then 11 is. Socks and then Baltimore's probably like the last. Yeah, but I mean, that's a stacked division. That's a stacked division. That's a tough one. So, yeah. grew up in Nashville. Who was your team? You know, growing up in the South, you really kind of had Braves. This, you, well, and and I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm no spring chicken. I'm, I'm almost 39. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you pretty much you had to be a Braves fan or a St. Louis Cardinals yeah. fan. Yeah. So, I was fortunate. I had an aunt and uncle that lived in St. Louis, so we made a lot of road trips to see the Cardinals when I was a kid. And then, of course, you know, going to Colorado, I was, you know, I was there first year of the Rockies, you know, right when they built Coors Field yeah. and everything. So I, uh, I followed the Rockies and, you know, we had one shot at, we had one shot at the World Series and, and their socks took them in four. So, <laughs> but, you know, well, that was my first World Series game. Actually, we have so. a gr- really storied um, Rockies player now, right? The second baseman. Yeah. So yeah. There you go. Exactly. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Bring that right, that love right over to us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they've uh, they've they've let quite a few go. Yeah, they've... it's at altitude. The, yeah. It's a great ballpark too. There. But you know, Fenway is just so amazing because it's kind of in that neighborhood, and you know, and everything, and then you know, all the everything around the streets and everything around yeah. it. it's just yeah. a just a neat experience. Maggie got to experience that. Yeah, Maggie got to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> For several hours. Man, that's right. right. That's right. With that 13 in or 12 in yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Fletcher, Fletcher, he, uh, he got some neat experiences. Oh, Fletcher, yes. Fletcher got extremely yeah. spoiled last year and yeah. had a great time. He's so into it, too. It's pretty awesome. That's yeah. great. We'll have him back. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it was fun to watch. I think, I, you know, I was with him a couple of times. I think he got a foul ball every game. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> nope. Yeah, he totally did. 
He's got his uh, bases out on the field, on the lawn. He's got his bats out, his gloves nice. out. Yeah, just waiting for the snow to melt. Yeah, it finding all the snowballs in the snowbanks. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as mud season's over, they'll be ready. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We're getting close. Nice. So close, so close. Awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was a great fall. I, I really thought they uh, they were going to get there at one point. Right. right? Yeah, just heck yeah. It's good time. Nice. All right, Maggie, good time to shine. She's been over there like almost falling asleep. I was like, Is she? <laughs> yeah, she's like, you're going to love paint someday. Uh, okay. <laughs> I actually just painted our living room. We stripped dining the wall. Room. Dining room. Sorry, dining room. We stripped yeah. the wallpaper off. I don't know. Some oh, boy. One day during the pandemic, my wife was like, you know, some purple. She's like, I've had enough of it. It just starts, it was peeling off anyway. Did it come off easily or is it one of those bad? No, it took a while, but it's yeah. been like that all winter. And she's like, we need to paint. We need to paint. We need yeah. to paint. So finally, the, the other night driving home, grabbed some paint. And Eva actually helped me paint. I was, yeah. you know, getting ready to cut in and everything. Yeah. She's like, can I help? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> she was gave her a brush. She cut she in. Got- oh, yeah. She did great. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, future painter, at awesome. least one. And <laughs> as soon as Maggie gets, I hear Maggie has a wall situation. So, as soon as she gets her wall back up or whatever. Yeah. To figure, you're, still, you're still living with half walls. Yeah. Yes. Darn, Maggie. Don't encourage her. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. This first one is from Rhett Eldridge. Oh, boy. <laughs> Rhett Ski. Hi, brother. Yeah, I know Rhett. What is your favorite? Benjamin Moore color. Well, it's hard to pick one. You know, um, I think probably uh, if I had to pick one, I, I think hail navy. It's a dark, dark navy blue, and uh, I think it's my shirt today. Kind of is a little reflectance to that, but yeah, it's a hail it's a great navy. color. But you know, I've, I've got a lot of favorites. I I still love Revere Pewter. I still love linux tan i still love i mean there's i've got briar wood I've, I've got some real favorites but is there like a color hall of fame where like colors get well, yeah. retired so if you well, not, not, not re, I, don't, I don't know any colors benjamin Moore does color of the year though right or, yeah we do color year yeah. october mist this year is our color of the year it's kind of a sagey green color it's pretty color um we just redid our website a couple of weeks ago so the whole color experience benjaminmoore.com is there you know mm-hmm. right on the forefront and one of the links on there is favorite colors, you know, our most popular colors. Yep. And it's, it, it's, it's got some, it, it just kind of shows the Hall of Fame type colors. Yep. Yeah. Kind of like baby names. See yeah. what, uh, over the years, how it trends. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't think it's like that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not missing out. Actually, bringing this right into our next question from yeah. Carol Straw. How do you come up with the color names? Well, you know, I, you know, I think a lot of people would like to think there's probably a campfire and some red wine or something involved. <laughs> in the, but it, it, actually, there's not. There's a team of people who are our corporate headquarters, a very, very, very talented group of individuals in our color marketing group who they study these things. They 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 see what automobile colors are going to be. They look at fashion. They look at all these kind of things, and they. They come up with the colors, and they come up with the color of the year, and um, that, and they're just a they, they they live and breathe color, and it's um, you know we've always been a color leader. That's one of the things Benjamin Moore's always been, and you know we we want to keep that going, and um, they they're the ones that name the colors. And if you think about it, I mean it's a lot goes into it. You know, there's a lot of colors uh, yes. that are named after food. There's a lot of after yeah. places. You know, we yeah. talked about some of the places. Yeah. There's a ton of East Coast towns and areas that I'll have that. But you know, then there's other things you have to worry about. Is there like copyright, you know, like copyrights, stuff. and you know yeah. those kind of tra- how things translate and that kind of thing. So yeah, Chase is a color maker. Yeah, it's got us in trouble a couple of times because he'll go down <laughs> and just see what he has that doesn't matter, and he'll just put it all together, and then. It ten, all, mu- ten months later, they'll be like, oh, guys, what color was that? Like, <laughs> Doesn't it always turn out like a kind of green, green or gray? Deeper, or purplish yeah. brown. <laughs> so what it's always right on that line. It's, I, it's not purple. <laughs> you need to get in your brain that it's not purple. It's never purple. <laughs> it's right on that line. It's, no, it's never purple. <laughs> good. So, that's good. It's brown. Because that's right. exactly that's what usually we did what on our house. <laughs> Maggie, I'm with you. I've, I've seen that happen over the years. <laughs> and he yeah. continues to call it purple, and it's not purple. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, he's just trying to sell it. Is all. <laughs> yeah. it's like all the, that matters. Our house is not purple. <laughs> all right. 
Um, and this is our last one. Okay. From Barb Putnam. What are the most popular interior and exterior colors this year? Ooh. Ooh. You know, um, I would say, for Barb, I would say go to our website. And, and look, it, they're all there. But the color of the year is October Mist. Um, it's like it's, it's a sage green type color. But, um, yeah, go to the website. It, I, and, and just the whole front page and the whole new color experience is, uh, is uh, everything's there. I think that you know, you'll find some great inspiration there. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And then some other colors coming up too sometime, but keep tuned, right? So, yeah. It's got a keep tuned. That was a good lead in there. Keep tuned. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, let's let the can we let the cat out of the bag just a little you, bit on you that? You tell us. You tell us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so a few weeks ago, I was up yeah. and, uh, and worked with Ashley, and we uh, we're going to curate some colors with Ashley that she's used on some of her camps. And I know you guys get a lot of questions <laughs> yeah. on the all website, the time. And, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. I know Jen fills a lot of those and everything. Yeah. So, we've uh, gone back and looked at some photographs, and we've actually. Uh, you know, picked you know, what color was that and that kind of thing. So I actually saw some of the work that was done earlier this week. So, yeah, so be prepared for that. We've got a little uh, Ashley's color collection. Yeah, for, nice. For coming up in, in, I think, maybe in the next few weeks. From awesome. I'll, I'll be able to launch that. So. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, keep your eyes out. And, yeah. Yeah. A Gus Black. <laughs> <laughs> there's, one, there's a funny one. I can't tell anything, so okay. keep your all eyes right, out. Right, keep right, your right. eyes out. Oh, this is exciting, though. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. And, you know, Ashley, she picked some great colors, you know. And I forget, you know, we, we as we're going through it, I mean, there's there's some cool colors on a lot of those camps. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. We started looking back. I mean, there's I mean, some vibrant colors. I mean, it, there's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's going to be neat. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we get to have fun with it and just kind of, you know, use colors that normally we probably wouldn't or we wouldn't get to pick out. So, yeah. We have fun with it, and color, color makes a big difference. It does, and so does paint. So. You know what? And some of the camps you got, how fun! I mean, like yes. some of the colors yes. you guys pick, they're just fun. I mean, you show up, you think about it, you show up at your camp in the summertime, and you know it's the weather's perfect, and you want to get out on the lake and everything, and you look at your and your exterior of your camp, it just screams fun. Yeah, you know, some of the colors. So yeah, if you have a couple of drinks, the weather comes up, you oh, can still find it. There you <laughs> go. Perfect. Well, thank you, Kevin. You're always good to see you, buddy. Yeah, you too. Guys. Yeah, thanks for Enjoy. joining us. Enjoy it. We love the relationship, and uh, we look forward to some Red Sox games, and uh, we look forward to another another great summer yes. and some more projects. So. Absolutely. 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 All right. Thanks, guys. All right, and we are back with our project pointers brought to us by our friends at Benjamin Moore. Brought to us by Kevin Hunt. We never had like the um, sponsor lead into this. That's pretty good. (laughs) We should have had him lead us into it. But if you've got a question, send us your question. Even though I just said don't. (laughs) Well, we're taking a break after this, right? We're close to the end. Yes, yes. But video it, put it in a file, and get it ready to send to us. Yes. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out our website for cool events going on this summer at the Woodshed and... A lot of stuff going on. Lots of stuff. Like you were talking earlier, like, it's amazing what's happening in the year. Like, it was a mud pit. Like, yes. It's exciting to start this year. Hopefully it won't be, like, as crazy it was on us. Like, now we can, like, fine-tune it. But to think that none of that was there last year. And who knows? We may be there, and you might be able to ask your project pointer right directly to us. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, I've seen people come up with a file on them. Yeah. You know, usually it's their camp, but, hey, <laughs> come at us with a project pointer. Like, we have three lobster bakes. You can come up, and it was going to be like a fan experience, so we'll be there eating a lobster, um, answering questions. We have the live podcast again. So there's a lot going on. And all that is on our website and on our social media, so check it out. There'll be a lot going on. Yeah. Now the real project for us. Okay, so this is the one with the pictures. This one is from Kevin Stump. I have a cabin on my private property in South China, Maine, that was used as a logging camp cabin many years ago. How does one determine to preserve a cabin, refurbish a cabin, or destroy it? How far gone is too gone? That's a good question. That and is. It, and this is it? Yeah. I'm going to say that's not too far gone, just by looking at it. Wait, let me see that other photo you have right <laughs> that there. That one looks oh, like, in my that professional sky, opinion. Is that a homemade skylight? Ooh. In my professional opinion, if, tear if, it down. If Dixie saw the homemade skylight, he would be like, torch that thing. 
Gosh, it's this cool, cool, cool log cabin, though, and you know it was built with logs right on site. I think it... I mean, it's not falling in. It's savable. Well, like, and it also depends on what you want to do with it. Right? I feel like I potted at this place in high school. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that roof. This is a... Depending on the rot. That's the big thing, correct? Looks like it's all rotted. Well... Today. Like the front, but the front or the back of the cabin is off the ground a foot and a half. Like it's not necessarily sagging. Like this potential, but like that Maggie said, like if the inside's rotting, like if your rafters are rotting, and I guess it also depends on his expertise level, like what he wants to put into it. I mean, it depends on. It's basically like a mini show, right? Like I wouldn't put a lot of money into it, right? You know, but if he has the expertise, put time in it. But if this has a history to him and he wants to save it, you know. Figure out what your budget is. Um, check, make sure, you know, foundation and roof. Oh, you want him to submit it to us? No, 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 no. I'm <laughs> saying he needs to approach it like it would be an episode. Right. You know, go in, look at it, be like, okay, what's my budget? Does this have history? Is it worth saving for more than just financial reasons? I mean, look how cool it is. Yeah. And then I would definitely, that roof, get something over that roof to stop any more water. And Even if it's just a tarp for now. Yep. But it doesn't look like it's sagging anywhere. Like It's off the ground. But some of those front logs are rotted, but it all depends on inside how, how the floor structure is. I mean, it definitely doesn't have a dirt floor. Because if that floor structure is still solid, you know, you put, you put some covering on that roof to stop more moisture and rain from getting into it. This is the problem. That, that, that side that is side the big is issue. Like, if that side looked like this side, I'd be like, Put money into it. Like, get your buddies out there. But to go get some rough cut, sawn lumber, slap them up there and re-shingle it. It looks like he has a nice overhang, though, so it doesn't look like that's necessarily going into the cab. Gosh. You definitely have to deal with that this summer, though. Like, you are at the point where two roads diverge. Either you yep. tear it down or fix it. Strip that side back. I think thro- throw in some new purlins. Why is there like one square of good siding up in the top? <laughs> and that's a newer, right? Yeah, that's nice architectural shingles up there. Yeah, like what? What about side notes going backwards? Unless the wind ripped, ripped it off. I got so many questions. I say salvageable. Maggie says no. I I think I don't know. Salvageable. I think it says keep out on the door for a reason. <laughs> don't go in there. But what it's so cool. I don't care if it's cool. Salvageable. I say salvageable. Strip. First thing I would do is strip that one side of the roof completely off, all the siding, all the roofing sheathing. If any of the logs, cross logs, the purlings need to be replaced, replace it. Deck it over with new pine, eastern white pine, shiplap. It's Go all right running over vertical. It. And then... Get some sort of cheap roofing on there, and then you know. Get some cheap roofing on both sides. If you're in South China, go right down the lakeside and get some metal roofing. Yes. Yes. It doesn't look that bad. Yeah, no. it does. It looks bad. I'm not going in there. Don't invite me. <laughs> I would possibly thin some che- trees out so some sun, sun hit it maybe, like get a little wind in there. Yeah. But very cool spot. Yeah, good luck. Get that roof fixed if if it if you are going to try and save it tear it down if you're going to try and save it which i say you can get that roof fixed asap throw some bedroom more paint on it (laughs) it's not going to save that thing okay this one is from Catherine brussel i live in a rustic on a rustic river in wade maine my backyard is very uneven i would like to have a deck fire pit hammock and barbecue on the deck possibly built in do you have any suggestions on how you can do this especially evening out the yard and making it no maintenance that's kind of a high maintenance question but i love it no maintenance yard what she said it was like that's definitely like call a landscaper like bring them in and do it right because you have to get someone in the machine or or they know how to uh level it out fire pit what else was it um, a hammock, hammock, deck, and a barbecue. So is she talking patio? I think so. De- 
or or a deck. Fire pits and deck don't go very well though. Unless you have a uh, <laughs> a tree free fire. <laughs> <laughs> Come down to Kennebec Cabin Company. Buy a bunch of those. Stack them up. I would say Ryan is right. Get a landscaper out there. And right. Maybe like yeah, a landscape architect or somebody who can. Or a contractor. Because she says, do you have any suggestions on how I can do this, especially the evening out of the yard and making no maintenance? Like, you get technical posts and then do a deck, possibly, like, off that. But I think, like, landscaping is the way to go with all that stuff. Built-in fire pit. Hardscaping. Hardscaping. Put a hammock on it and a barbecue. Yeah. Interesting. My biggest question is, where's Wade, Maine? Never heard of that before. Way up there. Way up north in the county. Well, Rustic River, so... Or just get a giant load of erosion control mix, spread it out. Throw it down. Throw it down, and then eventually it'll mulch down, turn into grass, and you'll have a nice level. Yeah, on even back, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Like, some of the places we've got, like, the roots and stuff, like... Yeah. And check codes, too, like, how close you are to the river. Like, that's that's another thing. Like, start there. Yeah. Sounds like a good project. Or just tear it down. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Send us a photo. Of your well, thank beautiful. you guys for all those questions. Yeah. Thanks for the project pointers. And over the summer, keep uh, putting me back pocket, right? Start a file so we have a bunch of them next yes. time. And on to fan questions. Yep. Okay. This one is from Kevin Souders. What is the best beer in Maine? The best beer in Maine. Yeah. I was going to say Coors Light because that's my beer, but it's um, not for me. I just saw Coors Light Seltzer. Have you ever had that? I don't think I have. I'm trying to switch back from Seltzer to Coors Light, going back to like gotcha. my roots. <laughs> you know. Best beer in Maine. The Woodshed. Right? Woodshed IPA? Sure. No. Or I, the Behind the Woodshed Pilsner? I, be, uh-huh. I prefer Behind the Woodshed Pilsner. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Any beer at the woodshed is going to taste great. You're going to be outside in the sun with great people. There might be dogs running around. So, and anything served at uh, our worldwide headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so many. There's good so beers. many. Like Geary's. Uh, like I think Geary's, old school shipyard, and then you have all these new ones. You know, Bissell Brothers, Baxter. Like, you know, we love Baxter. Like we have great. Yeah, history, go old history, old school. The Gritty's Black Fly Stout. I mean, that's a classic that is old yeah how about old school I lived in Portland on Thursday nights it was 25 cent Geary's at the forge <laughs> 25 cent <laughs> I'm aging myself that's pretty unbelievable yeah 25 cents I think it was probably like a 10 ounce cup but doesn't matter oh, that's definitely whew. yeah we get you I think Mackenzie lived out in where's Sierra Nevada made Chico yeah She. I visited her one time out there and we we went through the bars and as the night went on, beers got cheaper. It it was crazy. That's a bad combination. It was a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand the logic behind it, but right. I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah, and the price of beer now, like I couldn't even imagine being a young kid. Like, no, it's like half a, half an hour of labor, like eight bucks for a beer. It's like crazy, like. Oh, that's true when you put it that way. Right? Yeah. Wild. So many b- good beers are made. I couldn't pick, like, the best. I do think the beers here are great. And the new woodshed. Uh, yes. Behind the, yep. behind the woodshed. Behind the woodshed. Pilsner. Pilsner. Check it out or come here and buy it. Yep. That's right. Okay. I like that shameless plug. <laughs> it's fabulous. Marketing okay. at, at its best. This one is from Matt... Lindeman. I we just got our first puppy, a yellow lab. Any tips for training a young pup? <laughs> <laughs> you two seems like great people to ask this question oh, too. <laughs> we've, had, we've had a day with dogs. <laughs> we'll go into it, but we put I, the time in. Put the time in. They, uh, yeah, I have no tips. Yeah, put the time in, and it's nice to have an older dog around. Like when I was in college and my first dog, like I Do you think put, that really helps? 
Yeah, because then you don't have to train them that it's not going to go anywhere. Like, they can stick near the old dog. I kind of feel the same way. Like, when we got Otis, we had Bazooka. I think, and, it, I think it does. Like, not, I mean, they, they pick up the good habits and the bad habits. And the bad habits. So, I mean, it's kind of a best, like my, worst. My first dog, we took him to a professional trainer, and then, like, I trained him, and my dad trained him. Like, that dog was on command listed. And then, like, Gus, we, like, we were busy with life, and, like, we trained him some. Like, yeah. It was a good dog. He's not going to go anywhere, but it's going to... I think Gus is slowly becoming... I think as they get older, they can become less trained. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Not Kermit, though. Well, and I think dogs, like, especially labs, like to be trained. You know? Like, right. They're, they're meant to be bird dogs, and they like the commands. I guess take them to a puppy school. Yeah, um, Gus and I went to um, adult ed. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. it was good, but then I kind of, like, waned. But if you put the time in, like, that, that dog will sit for you, that dog will come. Yep. It's all the amount of time you put into them. Have fun. Let though. us know how it does. <laughs> Senna said she might be getting a puppy. Did she? Yeah. Or she texted me. She said, I, I bought a lamb chop squeaky toy. That's all she texted me. I'm like, why? It's a clue. <laughs> yeah. She needs a puppy. Yeah. Dogs. And make sure you're, if you're getting a lab, it's... um. Rescue, like get the DNA test. Charlie, um, I got the DNA, DNA test on Charlie because we got it for main lab rescue. Not one ounce of lab, <laughs> <laughs> but she's got super coon, all kinds of cool stuff in her. Cool. Chicken killer. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you for the questions. Those were great. Yeah. All right, we are on to our trivia question. Last week's trivia question was. Which one did I ask? The guy from Caribou, right? Oh, yeah. In September 1984, Joe Kittinger left Caribou on the first successful solo crossing of the Atlantic by what kind of vessel? Well, Caribou is not on the ocean, so that's kind of a clue. Kayak? No. Mm. Lawn chair, weather balloons, and BB gun. Exactly. That was my exact... <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it says. <laughs> Hot air balloon. Yeah. I would assume it's a hot air balloon. It just says a balloon. From Caribou. Yep. Wonder what direction he ended up going. Probably south. I don't know where Caribou is. I'll be very honest. No, no, he went trade winds go that way, right? So we went Well south the Atlantic is south. If you from Is that right? Yeah. South, isn't it east? He I went don't east. know where Caribou is. I'll be very honest. He went towards Caribou Europe? Here, but yeah, he went the towards Atlantic Europe. Atlantic is towards <clears throat> east. Yeah, he went towards Europe. Oh, yeah, I was totally... <laughs> I did my compass wrong. East, that's what I mean. That'd be scary. Yeah. No thanks. No thanks. What yeah. year was that? I think of how many... 84. It's first successful. 1984. How did you know that? Huh? Okay. Ready for? Yep. Are we doing another one? Oh, no. No, no that was the last one. That was the Ever. last one. I don't know if this one was. Stay so, tuned. We yeah, have more so next year. Congratulations to whoever got the last <laughs> question of the year right. <laughs> last question for the first successful balloon trip. Congratulations. Yeah. And with that, I think, we're closing up. I think so. The merchandise promo. Oh. And don't forget, while we take a break, to keep shopping at KennebecCabinCompany.com or stop into our headquarters hey, right think, here in Manchester, Maine. What do you think Maine. this is? Like flattening? We have um, these cool I actually know uh, what they are. coast hooks by Sea Stones. They are oh. stones that can be used as racks, can be used as towel hooks. They're cool. Yeah. And they've got little uh, cutouts in the back. It's a piece of main stone with aluminum rod attached to a piece of wood and it can be mounted it's got mounting brackets right on the back comes with the screws it's, it, i mean it's it's a stone it's fairly heavy but and it's a beautiful piece of cherry yeah really ha- all handmade beautiful you can uh, and if you get in a pinch and you have to like kill some bugs kill bugs or fillet your meat or like season it there you go grind down some spices <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> multi-purpose well, all right. Yeah, but don't forget to stop in to KennebecCabinCompany.com this summer. 
Swing by our headquarters, shop online. We Keep do have one more episode next week. It's our closing episode. So. Oh, so we won't get too sentimental don't right get now? Too, yeah. Don't All get right. Too up. Well, then we want to thank our sponsors for today. <laughs> Nelma, Hero Media Network, Hammond Lumber Company, and Kennebec Savings Bank. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and tuning in. And from the woodshed, we'll be talking to you. From the Woodshed has been brought to you by Nelma. See the stamp? Trust the quality. Hammond Lumber, your building project partner. Kennebec Savings Bank, helping our local community save, thrive, and grow for over 150 years. And Hero Media Network, connecting small business with new customers. From the Woodshed is a production of Kennebec Cabin Company. See you next time.